Welcome to the Sharpfin guide to patching the receiver radio. What I'm going to be showing you here is how to patch the, in my case, Logic IR100 with Win through Windows Vista. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is a quick word of warning. The receiver radio isn't designed for developers. It's designed to be a mass-produced piece of kit. On that basis, the there aren't a lot of mechanisms to recover the radio should you accidentally delete some key files, and there are quite a few ways to actually do that. So we need to be very, very careful once you've got into the radio, once you've got to the command line and you're logged on as the administrator, you remove the right protection of the main drive, you could quite easily trash the radio. So we're going to have to be very, very careful. On the flip side, there are protections in place. The sharp fin patches don't overwrite any key files or share any of the key files of the radio. They can be uninstalled, installed and uninstalled without uh, affecting the key key functionality of the radio. And we also uh, set up a, a user account, which is a, a really limited access account. He's not an administrator. He's there so you can browse and not cause any damage. Okay, the first thing you need to do is go to the Sharpfin website. Okay, um, you'll find a link enabling login. Have a good read all the way down there. And at the very bottom, you will find some patch files. There's a PDF file to download. There's a Windows patch server or a Linux patch server. We're going to be taking you through the Windows patch server. And there's a Sharpfin base patch file that we're going to actually apply to the radio. Download those files. And if you see, I've already got them on the desktop. Have a good read through the PDF file. It'll take you through in words everything that I'm about to take you through now. Um, also, it'd be very useful to print out specifically the page on this page here, uh, page number three, finding out your addresses, because we're going to identify some key addresses, write them down there, and we're going to put them into the radio later. But I'm going to take you through that whole sequence now. Okay, the first thing to do is to unpack the patch server. If you open the patch server zip file up, inside it you'll find a radio patch subdirectory. Unpack it. Okay, and um, one of the other things the um, the Sharpfin patch server actually requires is that you download and install Sigwin. Uh, you'll be able to find details of where to get it from inside the PDF file. It's very important it's downloaded and installed. If you install it in the default C Sigwin subdirectory, it will save uh, a little bit of time and effort configuring as well because the patch server will make the assumption if it can't find it, it will have a look there just to make sure. OK, so I've unpacked the patch server. The other file to unpack is the Sharpfin base file set. So again, there's a directory in there called Radio Patch. Drop it somewhere else on the desktop. And it'll ask, do you want to merge these directories? Yes, please. And that's everything unpacked now. So have a look inside the Radio Patch subdirectory. And there are all our files. OK, the next thing to do is to stop any DNS, domain name server, or uh, web server applications you have running on, on your computer. DNS server programs, you'll know if you've installed one, you'll be an administrator, you'll, you'll have been tinkering. Web server programs, you've either, either installed something like the Windows Microsoft web server, uh, or you've installed Apache web server, or possibly your peer-to-peer -peer program, or chat program has a web server, or even a television viewing program has a web server function built into it. Shut down any program that you've got on the local machine that you can access with a web browser. If you don't manage to shut it down, the patch server will, will bail out later on and you'll be able to keep closing down applications until you close down the correct one. OK, the next thing to do is to find our five magic addresses. What we need to do now is hit the start button. On Windows uh, XP, Windows 2000, you'll be doing start run on Windows Vista, which this is, you just type CMD. So irrespective of which, which version of Windows, the command is CMD. Hit that and it'll start up a command shell, a command prompt. In this window, you need to type IP config, all one word. Now, if you scroll to the top of that list that's just spewed out on the screen, you'll find the IPv4 address, subnet mask and default gateway. The IPv4 address in my case is 192.168.2.17. That's the address of this PC. Yours could well start with 192.168. It will possibly also start with 10.something. 
Okay, subnet mass 255, 255, 2550. I'd be very surprised if yours wasn't the same. And the default gateway, this is the address of my ADSL modem, is 192.168.2.1. And again, yours will be something perhaps similar, um, perhaps 10.0.0.1. Um, but you'll find some similarity between your PC address, your default gateway, and when we look at it in a minute, your radio address as well. So we've, can you write those three addresses, those three numbers down? There's the radio address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. The next one to find out is our name server. And what we do here is NS lookup, and then an address. And any name, any web address, I'll do www.receiver.com. And here we've looked at receiver's address, which is 80.68. something down there. But that's not the one we're interested in. We're interested here, the server, in this case is printed unknown, and the server's address, the name server, is 192.168.2.1, and then they put colon 53 on the end. We ignore the colon 53, okay, and the address we need is 192.168.2.1, and you'll probably find that it's the same as your gateway, your ADSL or cable modem. Uh, in my case, it is as well. So we have three, three, sorry, we have four of our magic numbers, and the next magic number to get is the address of the radio itself. We don't actually need this window anymore, so we can get rid of it. OK, what we need to do now is turn on the radio. OK, this is going to the last station that I was listening to. And you hit the back button and go to the configure menu. OK, if you go network config and go view config, and then if you scroll across to the right, you'll find a section that says IP address. And in this case, my radio is 192.168.2, which is the same as all of my other magic numbers, dot 14, which is the radio's address. OK, so now I know all of my magic numbers. I'm ready to apply the patch. And what I'm going to do is do that in the next video.